Five Lesser Known But Truly Creepy Cults You may have heard about the Manson family, the Moonies, Nexium, and other infamous groups. However, there are several cults and religious sects out there whose bizarre beliefs, practices, and rituals would make ancient paganism appear sane. Here are five lesser known but truly creepy cults. Number five, Raalism. Raalism is a mostly secretive religion that believes in the existence of extraterrestrial beings. They claim that humans originated from these creatures from outer space. Founded in the 1970s, this religion was the brainchild of Claude Verillon, a famous French sports car journalist and test driver. He claimed to have an encounter with aliens and later formed the Raalism movement. He also changed his name to Raal, which means messenger of the Elohim. The concept of the religion revolves around the belief that otherworldly creatures called Elohim created humans with their advanced technology. This superior race later sent messengers back to Earth in human form, including Buddha, Muhammad, Jesus, and Raal, who also happens to be the 40th and final prophet. While their beliefs are somewhat strange, Raalism has some sound values. They advocate for world peace, communal sharing, and a democratic system. They also have a very liberal view on sexuality, saying that the pursuit of sexual pleasure enhances intelligence by creating new pathways for neurons in the brain. Raalism gathered an enormous following in Asia, particularly in South Korea. At its peak, they had at least 20,000 members worldwide. But while Raalism is mostly harmless on the surface, it took a strange turn a couple of decades after its inception. In 1997, a few months after the birth of Dolly, the famous sheep clone, the Raalism sect established a company called Valiant Venture. The purpose of this company was to explore commercial applications of cloning technology on humans. In 2002, they made the bold claim that they had successfully cloned a human being but without any scientific proof, experts quickly debunked these claims. That didn't stop the company from continuing its commercial activities. They soon put up embryonic cell fusion devices for sale at $9,000 a piece, and nobody quite knew what the device was exactly or what it did. But still, some people decided to purchase it, and unsurprisingly, it turned out to be a scam. Valiant Ventures soon found multiple lawsuits piling up against them, and as a result, the number of Raalists began to dwindle. But while the story of Raalism and Valiant Venture may seem goofy to many, it may surprise you that there are still thousands of Raalists around the world as we speak. Number 4. Chen Tao Chen Tao is a religion with elements of Buddhism, Christianity, and ufology. Its founder, Chen Hong Min, was a former professor of sociology at Chien'an College of Pharmacology and Science in Taiwan. The Chen Tao sect, which is also called the True Way Cult, believes that our Earth went through five tribulations, the first of which occurred in the age of the dinosaurs. During these tribulations, God rescued a few chosen people in North America by taking them in a flying saucer. Chen and his followers also believe that our universe is four and a half trillion years old, 300 times older than what science actually says, and it was formed by a nuclear war. From Taiwan, the cult leader convinced his followers to move to San Dimas, California, where they would await God's coming. The group, along with each of their family members, migrated there around 1995. Two years later, Chen Hong Min became convinced that Garland, Texas would be the place where God would descend. To his ears, Garland sounded like Godland. He moved to Texas in 1997 
and his congregation followed him without any questions. Shortly after arriving to their promised land, Chen made a bold prophecy, one that would eventually be the undoing of his loyal cult. He proclaimed that at exactly 12.01 a.m. on March 31, 1998, God would be seen on a single television channel all across North America. At the time of this prophecy, Chen Tao had 160 members. Most of these families were well-to-do and they lived in an upper middle-class neighborhood in Garland. However, their neighbors weren't exactly pleased with their arrival. The sudden influx of religious Taiwanese unsettled the residents of Garland, and Chen's claims of God's broadcasting event only worsened things. People in the town feared that things could turn violent. However, at 12.01 a.m. on March 31st, nothing happened. The Chen Tao followers appeared confused, but to the relief of many residents, all they did was walk back into their homes. Chen Hong Min admitted that he may have misunderstood God's plan. He offered himself to be stoned for the failed event, but no one obliged. Turns out this wasn't the first time his prophecy flopped. Earlier on, he claimed that they would find the reincarnation of Jesus in the West and that he would look like Abraham Lincoln. In the weeks that followed, Chen once again urged his flock to relocate to New York State. However, many of the cultists were facing legal problems concerning their visa status in the United States, and so most of them just returned home to their country. Number 3. Am Shinrikyo Am Shinrikyo, which translates to Supreme Truth, is a doomsday cult that was headed by Matsumoto Chizuo, a semi-blind quasi-mystic who later changed his name to Asahara Shoko. The group began in the 1980s as a spiritual movement, mixing the doctrines of Hinduism and Buddhism. Later on, elements of apocalyptic prophecies were added into the mix. Asahara declared himself to be the new Christ and the Enlightened One after Buddha. Aum, as the sect is also called, gained official status as a religious movement in Japan in 1989. At its peak, the New Age religion amassed tens of thousands of followers worldwide. Asahara, who had once been a broke businessman, began living an extravagant life. He was driven around in Rolls-Royce cars, shuttled in a military-grade helicopter, and rode in private jets. His exorbitant lifestyle was supported by his followers, who he promised a calm, serene, and meaningful life in return for their offerings. However, things all changed. The Am followers started becoming paranoid of a doomed future. They began to believe that the world would collapse into a World War III which the United States would start. They also believed that Aum members would be the only people to survive. This paranoia led to an inward shift of the group's ideologies. From a peaceful disposition, Aum morphed into a violent movement. They encouraged violence not only against outsiders, but also amongst themselves. Anybody that dared to leave the cult was killed. Their bodies were then incinerated in a microwave crematorium, and their remains were pulverized into dust, which was then thrown away. In November of 1989, six cult members raided the property of Tsutsumi Sakamoto. Sakamoto was an attorney who, at the time of his disappearance, was working on a class action lawsuit against the organization. The followers strangled the man, his wife, and their one-year-old baby. But the most notorious attack of all came on March 20th, 1995. It was rush hour in the Tokyo subway station when five bags of sarin gas, the toxic nerve agent, was left to leak into the jam-packed trains. In a matter of seconds, thousands of people began to gasp for their lives as the toxins entered their lungs. Many people lost their sight while some were paralyzed. Authorities confirmed that at least 5,800 people were injured and 13 had perished that day. 
Investigations proved Om Shinriko as the group responsible for the attack. Asahara was arrested, and his headquarters were shut down. The leader was later convicted of multiple murders and sentenced to death in 2004. On July 6, 2018, despite all his appeals, Asahara was executed by hanging. As for his group, nothing has been heard from them since. Number 2. The Matamoros Killings Matamoros, a Mexican border town near Brownsville, Texas, was a famous travel destination for spring breakers. However, in 1989, something so horrific happened in this place, it forever tainted its name. During this time, Adolfo de Jesus Constanzo, who was nicknamed the Godfather of Matamoros, led a cult that practiced human sacrifice. They performed this morbid ritual at the Rancho Santa Elena, a remote desert compound close to Matamoros. Constanzo claimed that their sacrifices would make one invisible to the authorities, while his clairvoyance allowed him to predict when the police would conduct a raid. Drug dealers and kingpins often came to Constanzo for his spells. On one occasion, Constanzo called on his followers to find him a smart, handsome, intelligent, and most importantly, American man to sacrifice. Fate had it that on March 11, 1989, American college student Mark Kilroy was in Matamoros together with his friends. The 21-year-old was the epitome of an all-American boy next door. He had blonde hair, a well-built body, a pre-med course, and he was also athletic. If there was one man Constanzo wanted, it was Kilroy. The cult kidnapped, tortured, and eventually sacrificed the young man by chopping his head off with a machete and eating his boiled brains. This was supposed to grant them immunity from the authorities, but instead, it was the very thing that led to the cult's undoing. Kilroy's friends quickly reported him missing, but with no clues, there wasn't much the authorities could do. It wasn't until April 1st that a break in the case came. Mexican police at the border checkpoint were stunned when a pickup truck sped through without stopping. Apparently the driver, a member of Constanzo's cult, was supposed to be invisible to the authorities thanks to the sacrifice. Police suspected drug-related activities so instead of turning on their sirens and giving chase, they decided to follow the truck silently. The truck then led them to the Rancho Santa Elena, where the police found what they had suspected. The ranch was stacked with drugs, guns, and bullets, but that was far from the worst part. After an investigation and several interrogations, authorities discovered something way worse than just drugs. Buried on the compound were the mutilated bodies of 27 sacrificed victims. Most of them were homeless, sex workers, or drug addicts, which is why their disappearance never made headlines. However, mixed in among them was the body of Mark Kilroy. The grotesque nature of Kilroy's death gained attention all over the world, with international pressure, a large-scale manhunt, for Adolfo Constanzo ensued. On May 6, the reports came that Constanzo was at an apartment complex in Mexico City. The police raided the apartment and were met with an intense gun battle. However, eventually, the cult was overpowered. Police rushed in to arrest Constanzo, but he had already committed suicide. Those who survived the clash were tried by the court and convicted for the murders committed at the Rancho Santa Elena. But despite the case being solved, police still suspect there may be more victims whose remains have yet to be recovered. As for the cult, nothing has been heard from them since that raid in 89. Number 1. The Ant Hill Kids The Anhill Kids was founded by the highly charismatic Roche Theralt in 1977. He convinced his members to leave their families and join him in a secluded community 
where they could live in unity and equality and be free from sin. He told his members to build an entire town in the mountains of San Jacques, Quebec, which he called Eternal Mountain. His people worked relentlessly, like worker ants on a hill. Thus, the name Anhill Kids was coined. While the cult's practices then were somewhat strange, it wasn't anything horrific, at least not yet. Once the Eternal Mountain was established, Roche once again urged his community to move to a new site near Burnt River, Ontario in 1984. It was there that things became increasingly dark. Roche had a drinking problem and it only got worse once they moved. Eventually, his leadership revolved around abuse and harsh punishment to those who failed to please him. Shockingly, however, the Anhill kids' numbers continued to grow. Roche had married all the single women in his group and impregnated each one of them. If that wasn't bad enough, the Ralts atrocities continued to become more extreme and violent. Soon he started making members break their own legs with sledgehammers or sit on lit stoves as punishment. When there was a feud, he would make the involved party shoot each other. At its worst, he would also sometimes command followers to cut another person's toes with wire cutters just to prove their loyalty to him. The children weren't spared either. Testimonies indicate that the children were sexually abused and inflicted with extreme pain. One time, he had some little children nailed on trees while others threw stones at them. The horrifying acts didn't end there. Believing himself to have healing powers, he began performing dangerous surgical operations, which all ended up in major injuries or sometimes death. One appalling operation he performed was on Solange Bullard. He made her lie on a table punched her in the stomach and then rammed a plastic tube into her rectum and poured olive oil and molasses inside. As the woman screamed in agony, he cut her abdomen with a knife and ripped out her intestines with his bare hands. Bollard died the next day. A former member, Gabrielle Lavalli, tried to escape after the Rawl cut off her breast, smashed her head in with the blunt side of an axe, and cut off her fingers. When she returned, the leader amputated her entire arm using a chainsaw. The Ralts' arrest finally came in 1989 after Lavalli had fled the commune once again. This time she contacted the authorities instead of returning. Turns out the provincial police had long been suspicious of the community. However, due to legalities, they were unable to conduct an investigation. Lavalli's testimonies paved way for them to finally bring Roche to justice. He was convicted for multiple charges, including abuse and murder. He was sentenced to life in prison in 1993. And meanwhile, the Ant Hill kids disbanded. On February 26, 2011, 63-year-old Theralt was murdered while serving his prison time at Dorchester Penitentiary. So there were five lesser-known but truly creepy cults. Strange and sadistic cults make us question how such people still exist. In our time, such stories seem like they belong centuries ago. However, behind the hustle and bustle of our modern lives, there are still hundreds, if not thousands, of cults hiding away. If you enjoyed this video, then please subscribe to our channel and hit the notification bell because we have new videos coming out every single week for you guys to check out. We appreciate you watching and we'll see you soon.